Hi, Dr. Mel again, Mini Health Talk to get you healthy again. Today, we're going to talk about a Bell's palsy, facial paralysis. So, to be able to treat the Bell's palsy, to make sure if you're a patient to take care of your Bell's palsy, we have to understand the cause of the Bell's palsy. Number one, cold sores or general herpes. Herpes simplex is a very common reason. Mostly this kind of virus causes Bell's palsy. It takes longer to recover. Number two, chicken pox or shingles, herpes zoster. This, this kind of Bell's, uh, virus causes Bell's palsy. We call this uh, Rams Huntington's disease. This is even hard to recover. Infectious modern nucleosis, Epstein Barr. This is a kind of uh, another virus, cytomegalovirus infection, respiratory illnesses, German measles, mumps, influenza B, and hand, foot, and mouse disease, like Cooksack virus. Okay, next page. So the to to be able to treat or take care of your Bell's palsy effectively, we need to understand the pathology of it. So the pathology of Bell's palsy is swelling of a facial nerve due to the immune or viral diseases. Sometimes no reason, but no matter what, it's a swelling of a facial nerve. That's something we need to remember. Okay, number two, ischemia, that means lack of blood or compression or the push of facial nerve in the narrow confine, confines of its course through temporal bone. So the facial nerve have a very narrow outlet on the cranial bone. So each time when there's no swollen, they function well because the circulation well. When they're swollen, they squeeze the facial nerve, almost like your nerve got pinched for a long time. It causes numbness and loss of a function. Facial nerve loss of function are paralyzed due to the ischemia and compression. That's what I just explained to you. Next one. So diagnosis is pretty easy. Number one, weakness of the entire half of the face. Number two, unilateral forehead wrinkles become shallow or disappeared. Early stage when you have it just less, and then it depends the completely discover, uh, disappeared, and as the treatment going, it slowly recovered. Unilateral lip unable to hold the air or make a symmetrical case. So when the Bell's palsy patient come in, you ask them to blow the air, like a, like a, like a frog. Mostly they can't do that. They just do like that. Okay. Or when you make, ask them to make a case, they will just twist it, okay? So this is because of uh, asymmetrical muscle strength caused by the uh, uh, nerve, uh, nerve weaknesses. The last thing we have to do is that when you see a patient have a facial paralysis, you have to rule out strokes, or cerebral tumors, or Rums Huntington's syndrome, or many year infection, uh, chronic uh, meningitis infections. You have to rule out those. Without rule out those, Bell's palsy is, it, there's no life threatening, but any of this, if you neglect it, it could cause life threatening, uh, threatening issues. Next one. So acupuncture treatment. So when we talk about acupuncture treatment, please, please don't jump into the point selection right away. As a healer, we need to focus on the causes and the pathology of Bell's palsy, okay? Number one, since the cause of Bell's palsy is mainly uh, viruses, we definitely need to clean up the entrances by number one, use Listerine soak mouth five minutes before bed, okay? That way when you clean the mouth, there's no extra germs or virus enter into the nerve pathways and the, the causes 
is taking off, it will be easier and fast for you to treat the patient, or for the patient, it will be easier and fast for you to recover. Number two, eye drops and eye covers to stop the pathogens from entering the eyes. So uh, during the treatment, I always tape my patient's eyes so that the pathogen won't enter in through the eyes. Uh, I advise the patient at night, they either tape it, but, but tape it for too long can cause allergy to skin. So I, I prefer uh, eye covers or eye drops. Number two, facial paralysis leaves space unguarded, wear a mask. <laughs> right now, it's necessary to prevent uh, direct wind blow on the face causing dehydration or cool damage in delay the recovery. Right now it's good. <laughs> Used to I have to uh, remind the patient to wear a mask all the time. Right now I don't have to remind them because of COVID, they wear the mask automatically. But without COVID, they still have to wear the mask to pre protect the face when it's uh, paralyzed from a cold or wind, cause a dehydration and then further damages. And plenty of rest. So when the virus invest, uh, uh, invade your nerve, you need a rest to restore your immune system for the facial nerve recover from the edema induced squeeze damage. Next one. So, acupuncture point selection, there's do's and don'ts. So, early stage, that's minimum is two weeks, local strong needle or electric stimulation are prohibited for BP. Any kind of strong stimulation can only further the damage the ischemic and the compression induced the facial nerve. Because the facial nerve at this stage, so the first two weeks, is squeezed so hard. If you use a stronger stimulation or a stronger needling, that will further damage the nerve. Because when the nerve is blocked from here, you just try to, almost somebody is hungry to death, you, you, you beat them up for them to work hard, what happened? They'll pass out. Same way to the uh, to the nerves. At this stage, you, you don't want a strong stimulation. If you want a treatment, I prefer the opposite side. So th let's see, on the right side of paralysis, you can treat the left side. And I prefer the distal stimulation and uh, <laughs> uh, and local point is GB14, Yuyao, Taiyang, Sanjiao 17, large intestine 20, stomach 246, run, run 24, do 26. I prefer to pump the health side of the face at least first two weeks and until the patient stops improving. Now I switch to the paralyzed side again. Yeah, so that's what I talked about before. Okay, next one. So these are points of selection. So paralyzed side, I usually use large intestine four, stomach 36, and liver three. I choose very minimal points. However, the healthy side, so you wanted the crossing. I use large intestine three, four with electric stimulation, hand image with needle on mouse, index, middle finger. So the image I will puncture. Let's see, I have a left paralyzed, I have puncture these three fingers. You, you have to imagine this is your face. This will be the paralyzed side. You puncture them to stimulate the image side too, so that the nerve can recover fast. Healthy side, the leg and foot, it's liver three and four. Foot facial image with each needle from first two to sp uh, spleen one, second two, and third two. Stomach six, six and spleen nine with electric stimulation. Later on, I added a stomach eight or seven, uh, spleen eight or seven. And that's, I learned something from the Richard Tan. Um, he used that to treat the Bell's palsy effectively. And also, I can treat him from giving once a day for the first week. So you just stimulate the these two uh, to uh, make sure the nerves recover. The three times a week until the patient recover about 95%. Then switch to twice a week treatment until 100% recover. Chinese herbal remedy, the principle is the same as acupuncture. You know, if you understand the acupuncture, you will understand the herbs too, because the principles are basically the same. So Huang Qi, so you improve the immune system, Yin Chao San, clear up the uh, toxins and, and virus. 
Chanxie Wugong to move the blood. You take three gram, three times a day, dissolve with herbal, uh, blend with hot water, she will be for use. The large dose of Huang Qi not only improve the immune system and strengthen the heart to clear up the edemas, but also it works together with Yin Chao San to clear up the virus. Quan Xie Wu Gong attack the virus and reduce the swelling and spasm. So that's uh, the basic uh, com um, combination of herb. But according to uh, the patient symptom, you can all the addition or um, take out. But the Huang Qi, I never change that. Yin Chao San, I hardly change. Sometimes I can use that Pu Ji Xiao De Yin too. But basically, I have to use something to clear up the uh, virus. Okay, next please. As far as you follow the treatment plan, 98% of the patient should recover above 90 to 95% in a, in a month. The other 10 to 5% of recovery usually takes about anywhere from two to six months, depending how well patients want to pursue the quality of the balance of the two sides of the face. Thank you again for you to spend time with me to learn the Bell's Palsy, uh, the fact of Bell's Palsy and the acupuncture Chinese herbal medicine treatment. If you like my program, please sum up. If you want further more information, my future lectures on Chinese medicine topics, please subscribe my uh, Mini House Talk channel. Thank you again, we'll see you next time.